Hey, this is Dr. Ben White's host of the Rational Wellness Podcast. I talk to the leading health and nutrition experts and researchers in the field to bring you the latest in cutting edge health information. Subscribe to the Rational Wellness Podcast for weekly updates. And to learn more, check out my website, drwhites.com. Thanks for joining me and let's jump into the podcast. Welcome to our podcast interview today with Dr. Isabella Wentz, where we'll be discussing her new book on adrenal dysfunction. This is a topic that has been much debated within the medical community for some time. The idea of adrenal fatigue was first proposed by Dr. James Wilson in his book of the same name in 1998. However, the concept was initially dismissed by, med by traditional medical doctors who said that if you had low functioning adrenals and low cortisol levels, you had Azen's disease. And if your adrenal glands produced too much cortisol, then you had Cushing syndrome and there was nothing in between. This concept uh, of slightly underperforming adrenal glands, which Wilson discussed, was taken up by functional medicine practitioners. And then in recent years, the idea of adrenal fatigue has been widely discredited as an invalid concept. Since the exception of Addison's disease, which is rare, the adrenal glands never truly lose the ability to secrete cortisol. Despite this, many patients continue to experience fatigue, brain fog, intolerance to exercise, feeling overwhelmed, and other symptoms. And sure, reduce cortisol levels. Um, or cortisol not being released at the proper time on saliva testing that is typically performed a number of times a day. Today, we'll be diving into this topic with Dr. Wentz and exploring the nuances of, of what we call adrenal dysfunction and its impact on our health. It, Dr. Isabella Wentz has a doctor's of pharmacy degree, and she's an internationally acclaimed thyroid specialist. She has dedicated her career to addressing the root causes of autoimmune thyroid disease after being diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis in 2009. She's the author of three books on Hashimoto's, Hashimoto's Thyroiditis, Lifestyle Interventions for Finding and Treating the Root Cause, which by the way is the most incredible book on thyroid. And I've got it underlined and, and highlighted and I've referred to that book so many times. Um, Hashimoto's Food Pharmacology and Hashimoto's Protocol, which became a number one New York Times bestseller. Today, we'll be discussing her new book, Adrenal Transformation Protocol. Dr. Wentz, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Ben. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Great. So uh, since so much of your professional focus was on thyroid, why did you decide to focus on the adrenals in this new book, in your new program? I felt called to really focus on adrenal health because healing my adrenals was part of my thyroid journey. I initially got on thyroid meds, which were helpful. So we want to make sure we're optimized on T4, T3. That, that's a big game changer for people. I got off of gluten and dairy, which was life-changing for me as well. And I recommend that for others with Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. Sometimes the condition can go completely into remission when we just do these things. But I still struggled with brain fog fatigue and anxiety and unrefreshing sleep, even though I was sleeping a lot after having made these changes. Right. And right. so I kept hearing the term adrenal fatigue, adrenal fatigue, and being like a skeptical pharmacist, <laughs> I looked up the term and then I saw that it didn't exist. <laughs> right. <laughs> it doesn't exist. And I was like, okay, so I don't have this. And, you know, I kind of went about, tried other things. And so finally, it was like the 15th person that mentioned adrenal fatigue to me. And I was like, okay, I will give this a try. And sure enough, I tried the interventions for it and they helped. So I had this thing that didn't exist and nothing was going to help even if it did exist. Right. And then the things that, that um, you know, these crazy people were recommending. And then I felt so much better. So the brain fog improved. The fatigue was so much better. I could wake up in the morning and be full of energy. 
And I also had refreshing sleep and I didn't need to sleep so much. My anxiety was gone. I haven't had a panic attack in 10 years. And they used to be a very um, frequent, unwanted part of my life prior to balancing my adrenals. And it's like, I can't believe it's been 25 years with, you know, since Dr. James Wilson was talking about this condition and people are still saying it doesn't exist. It doesn't <laughs> exist. And I'm like, what about it? Like, can we please just stop gaslighting the people that are going through these very real symptoms and help them get the help that they need? In my experience, just about everybody that I've worked with, with Hashimoto's has some degree of adrenal dysfunction where they might have too much cortisol, cortisol at the wrong times of day, or not enough cortisol produced. And there's a way to get into balance from that. It's not Addison's disease. It's not Cushing's. It's not a disease per se. This is a very predictable way that the body responds to stress. And not just people with thyroid issues, but other people who are struggling with, with all these symptoms, they're presenting with this as well. And they're walking around without a diagnosis. They think they're you know crazy or lazy or just like really anxious, edgy people. Yeah, you know, it sort of reminds me of the uh, issue with diabetes, where medical doctors, your blood sugar could go from 80 to 90 to 100 to 110. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. All of a sudden, it hits 125. Now you got diabetes. Maybe it was a gradual process where you're uh, where you you weren't producing, uh, you weren't handling glucose quite as well as you should have. And, and if you had recognized it earlier, um, you could have helped some of these people not end up with frank diabetes. I, I mean, yes. And it's like, same with, with the thyroid gland. It's like, sometimes a person will have a, you know, the reference range is 4.5 for TSH and they'll have a 4.4 your thyroid is fine, right? right. When really a healthy person should right. have a ESH somewhere around 0.5 to 2 if they don't have a thyroid condition. And with, with the adrenal glands, it's the same thing. So you don't manifest with Addison's disease until 90% of your adrenal glands have been destroyed. Um, but there's, and you can also have other reasons for inadequate cortisol production. And part of it could just be this stress adaptation. So you're Adrenals may be perfectly healthy. You may not have an autoimmune response against your adrenals, but because your body is overwhelmed by stress, there's going to be a disconnect between the hypothalamus and the pituitary and the adrenal glands and the hormones they secrete. It's like kind of like the boy who cried wolf. It's like you tell, you go enough times and say, okay, we're stressed, we're stressed, and more cortisol, please, more cortisol, please. Eventually, the body is going to adapt and say, you know, we just can't have this much cortisol produced. And this high level all day, every day, we really need to start shutting down production. And this, this is what happens with um, receptors when they get overwhelmed by certain messaging, they become desensitized to the message. Absolutely. And so let's talk a little more about the connections between thyroid and adrenals and how adrenals affect thyroid and thyroid affects adrenals. It's definitely a two-way street. So in my experience, people who have hypothyroidism will generally break down their cortisol slower. So they end up with more cortisol in their body and more cortisol metabolites. It's a protective mechanism, right? So the body's like, oh, you're not making enough thyroid hormone. Let's help you out by keeping cortisol around a little bit more. And then you end up feeling more edgy and wired, but you, you know, you, you kind of get your your cortisol kick from um, from the adrenals, which which isn't the best type of energy, but it's energy, right? Right. And you end up getting a um, diagnosis of maybe hypothyroidism. You get put on thyroid meds, which can be incredibly helpful if you're hypothyroid, but they can also uncover a low cortisol issue that maybe you didn't know when your body was compensating because then your cortisol clearance normalizes. And so that means it increases if you'd been hypothyroid. And then a person will say, I felt better at first with the thyroid meds, but then all of a sudden I crashed and I'm like brain fog, fatigue, all of that got worse. What, what is happening? And many times it's like this uncovered low cortisol state, about 60% of the people that I've tested with Hashimoto's that were symptomatic were actually in the low cortisol state where they had low cortisol all day long. Um, and most of them were on thyroid meds and in this in this situation, it's not more thyroid to overcome the fatigue. It's let's support your adrenals 
to get back into balance. Now, the other part of the pathway, and I always ask people, what was going on in your life before you got sick? And usually they'll say, I was on a period of a lot of stress. Um, And stress can make us produce a type of thyroid hormone we don't want. It's known as reverse T3. And again, this is the body's feedback loop where we, um, the body's like, there's too much of this. We need to slow down this, right? Um, And reverse T3 is the inactive thyroid hormone where that will sit inside of our thyroid receptors and, and block them instead of activating them. And then this usually goes along with low levels of active T3. And so people will say, I take thyroid medications that are supposed to be converted to T3, the active the levothyroxine is T4, right. the uh, less active thyroid hormone that normally should get converted into T3 in the body, but it doesn't for a variety of reasons. And so people will say, I'm taking this medication, but it's just not working. And sometimes they do better on like a natural desiccated thyroid that contains some of the three directly. And that's my that that's because of that stress and cortisol component that drives up the reverse T3 production. And this can even happen in people without a thyroid issue. So you can have a perfectly healthy thyroid without the immune system messing with it, but you just have all this cortisol and stress on board and you're going to end up with hypothyroid symptoms because of that reverse T3 blocking your thyroid receptors. And this has been a subset of my clients um, as well, as well as some, some friends reaching out to me that said, Isabella, I have all these symptoms. I know you help people with Hashimoto's that have these symptoms. I don't have Hashimoto's, right? Um, but they can have definitely have these symptoms. And this is where something like a, you know, reverse T3 test um, or testing free T3. And would be most helpful. of them probably haven't had a reverse T3 test because that's not a test that's typically done. It's not typically done. And if a person comes to me with Hashimoto's, I'm not necessarily going to do it because I'm like, I already know you have a thyroid problem and I already know you have an adrenal problem. So let's like, you know, let's let's Get right not to the treatment. Yeah. Let's go right to the treatment options. We don't, we don't need to like, you know, feed the vampires with all this blood. Right. (laughs) But with a person who maybe has these symptoms, then I'm really looking at like what's going on in your body. And if, if I, if they were open to doing testing, I would do something like a adrenal saliva test or maybe a Dutch test and some reverse T3. But I also in my book, I just talk about the symptoms people can utilize to assess themselves because the testing is not always accessible. Sometimes the the functional test can take weeks to get back. And by that time, like you could have really worked on your health. Yeah, typically a couple of weeks to get test results back for functional medicine testing. Right, and the protocol can work in four weeks where within, you know, I've had patients and clients and I'm sure you've had them too, where you give them a test and they're like, yes, I'll take this test. And then, uh, you know, three months go by and it's like the test is still sitting at home and it's like collecting dust on a shelf. For sure. We make those calls all the time. You got to do the test. Yeah, absolutely. And so I wanted to give people more of a streamlined approach where they can really get to know their symptoms and learn about what their body is trying to tell them and how to care for themselves to get themselves in the best state. So whether they're working with a practitioner, hopefully they are, they found somebody really good to work with that can support them. Or even if they're, you know, trying to do things on their own for their own health, a lot of the strategies are safe and effective. We're not, we're not talking about using hormones in my book. We're, we're really focusing on solid lifestyle things people can do. Right. Um, I noticed in your book, you talk about the relationship between cholesterol and adrenal function and, Right now in health, we seem to be focused on trying to drive cholesterol levels as low as possible to stop heart disease. And we're constantly being told that that's fine. There's not going to be a problem with the brain function or anything else because all those other tissues make whatever cholesterol they need. Well, I would say, <laughs> um, there in so cholesterol is responsible for making our hormones. 
And from a pharmacist perspective, it is a category X for women who are pregnant because their body is needing to have hormones and it can be associated with a lot of damaging effects when we suppress, um, well, uh, you know, the cholesterol lowering drugs are. So when we suppress cortisol or sorry, I've been talking about cortisol all day. <laughs> um, when we suppress cholesterol production too much, we can potentially suppress the production of other hormones and it doesn't happen to everybody, but it can be something to be on the lookout for. The other thing to consider is cholesterol, high cholesterol actually can be a symptom of hypothyroidism and even low T3. So part of how we make hormones out of cholesterol is utilizing thyroid hormones, specifically T3. So getting your thyroid hormone in check and your adrenal glands in check can be a way to optimize your cholesterol levels. It's like your body can drive up, you know, your body's like, okay, we're under stress. We need to make more cortisol. So um, cholesterol is kind of sits at the top of the pyramid and it turns into pregnenolone, which is our mother hormone that gets turned into um, progesterone and cortisol and DHEA and our sex hormones and all these beautiful hormones downstream. But if the body's like, I need more cortisol because I'm in a lot of stress, cholesterol can be gone up. And when we balance that stress response, that need for cortisol, that need for these other hormones, then we can actually help with balancing cholesterol levels as well. Cool. Um, you talk a lot about your body, helping your body to feel safe in order to heal and how to send safety signals to your body. What's the importance of this concept? One of the reasons why people get stuck in this adrenal dysfunction is because their body gets the message that we're under stress or we're in the presence of a threat right now. We have these beautiful ancient bodies that respond to, um, you know, to modern signs of normal life. And they're still interpreted by our caveman, cavewoman genes, right? So if we're doing things like over-exercising or overworking to a caveman or a cavewoman, you know, they, they wouldn't be doing that, right? So, so it gets interpreted as, in some cases, as stress. And if we get too many of these stress and threat signals, we shift into that survival mode. We shift into our sympathetic mode where we are in our fight or flight system. We're in a catabolic state where the body's breaking itself down for fuel rather than being in our, um, you know, parasympathetic state where we are resting, digesting, healing, and thriving. And, you know, we, we do need a balance of both. I'm not saying one is good and bad. We do need to spend time in both of these systems but what can happen when people with adrenal dysfunction, they're spending more time in that catabolic fight or flight state rather than having a good balance of, of you know, breaking your body down and building it back up. Right. Because the adrenal gland is our major stress gland. And that's where uh, adrenaline and cortisol comes into play that are secreted by the adrenals. Exactly. Um, so let's talk about the recommendations for how to feel better with adrenal dysfunction? Let's start with diet. What's the best nutritional approach? I really love focusing on a paleo-like diet. So we're utilizing, we're getting rid of the most common inflammatory foods, gluten, dairy, soy, as well as grains, because they can be problematic for blood sugar issues. This is a 30-day plan. And generally people can um, introduce some of the foods if they feel okay with it, such as the grains after a time period. But a lot of people do find that they feel significantly better. We're generally going to be doing more protein and fat than the average person, a bit lower carb throughout the day, maybe some more carbs at night. Carbs can lower cortisol. So that can be helpful for people to getting to sleep. And then we're also utilizing a lot of nutrient dense foods. One of the issues people can have with um, when they're in that stress response is they can have trouble digesting food. So I utilize a lot of smoothies in the morning. Okay. Um, what about digestive enzymes? I guess that'd be another way to get around that. Absolutely. And the plan has, it's a four week plan that really focuses on um, kind of a minimalist approach to get the maximum dose of um, improvement in that, those four short weeks. 
Um, and I use sea salt as a way to stimulate di digestive enzyme production. But the back of the book also has advanced strategies such as using digestive enzymes or using thiamine to help drive energy production as well as hydrochloric acid production. It kind of depends on the person. It's, um, it's, it's, um, I didn't want people, you know, there's, there's so many options for ways to heal the body. And I didn't want to give sure. people too many choices at first. Cause I know one of the main symptoms of adrenal dysfunction is overwhelm. Um, so I wanted to create a very straightforward and easy right. to do plan. Sure. And the whole second part of the you book. You don't want to overwhelm them with 20 supplements to take. Exactly. Exactly. But in, I do have a section in the third part of the book on additional things to consider, such as doing more testing or, or additional deficiencies and what symptoms may indicate that you may need additional support. Right. And, um, you, you talk about targeted supplements and, uh, uh, the supplements that you focus on are adrenal adaptogens, magnesium citrate, Saccharomyces boulardii, myo inositol. Um, there's uh, adrenal adaptogens are these herbs that can help modulate adrenal and other function in the body. Um, but there, there are a lot of them. Which ones do you think are the most important? Um, I list out a few of them in the book, and some of my favorites are ashwagandha. They can be very, very helpful for um, people with thyroid issues. They can actually normalize TSH in some cases, so I always recommend checking your thyroid hormone when taking that one. Rhodiola is another one of my favorites. It's been studied in anxiety and depression. Then there are ones that, um, such as maca and shatavri, that may be especially helpful for libido issues. So um, there is you know, I would say those are some of the more common ones I use. I really like reishi for people, especially like in the evenings, it can be very helpful for giving people a little bit more energy, but also for helping them sleep well at night. I'm assuming you're using some formula that contains a combination of these. I generally, for, for the average person that's not sensitive to supplements, I may recommend something that contains adaptogens, B vitamins and vitamin C in it so that they can have a really, you know, kind of just one supplement to take. If somebody, you know, for like nursing moms or people that tend to be more sensitive to supplements, then I might recommend utilizing one adaptogen at a time, like holy basil or Tulsi tea is a really fantastic adaptogenic herb that can be utilized, um, you know, by nursing moms. Although I always recommend testing, you know, checking in with a midwife or a lactation consultant. And max citrate. This is going to be something that can be incredibly helpful for anxiety, for trouble sleeping at night, for pain in the body, for constipation. And generally, you know, magnesium is involved in so many processes in our body and um, it can be helpful for producing neurotransmitters, for helping us produce GABA, which is our internal chill pill, for helping us um, produce L-tryptophan so we can rest and sleep better at night. And it is something that is works so well for tension and cramps in the body. And then um, Saccharomyces boulardii. So this is a healthy yeast probiotic product. This is one of my kind of um, tweaks. Because a lot of times, one of the, the triggers for getting in that stress response, not a lot of people are aware of, but it's actually having gut infections. And whenever we're stressed out, our secretory IgA in our gut is lowered. This is our natural defense layer in the gut. And so sarcomyces boulardii helps to raise that natural defense naturally. <laughs> um, so then we can overcome these infections that are there. We can become less sensitive to the foods that we're eating. We're not as likely to catch infections. Um, it's helpful for candida. It's helpful for various protozoa. It's helpful for clearing out mold out of the body as well and, and some pathogenic bacteria. Okay. And then myo-inositol? Myo-inositol is something that's been really making the headlines in the last few years. I, I typically have always thought of it as something for PCOS. It has been used in PCOS and it can be very helpful for that. In recent years, it's been studied for people with thyroid issues as well. And so it's been shown to normalize TSH levels 
and get Hashimoto's antibodies into remission. Now, not everybody, it's not going to happen for everybody, but it, it is such a profound effect that I always recommend testing if you are already taking thyroid meds, because in some cases, especially in the early cases of hypothyroidism, this can help with normalizing that TSH. It is something that can um, balance blood sugar, and that's why it's so helpful for adrenal issues, which are oftentimes correlated with blood sugar swings. It's helpful for anxiety. It's helpful for obsessive compulsive disorder as well. Generally, people will say they take it and they sleep better throughout the night because they're not having as many blood sugar swings. So this is something that um, that it, it's kind of become a recent favorite of mine. And there's been a lot of incredible studies with with all the benefits of, of this nutrient. What is the dosage that you like uh, for myoinositol? Around 600 milligrams. Okay. Um, for, for the adrenal purposes and other doses have been... There's been doses higher than that that have been used for um, for things like obsessive compulsive disorder. For the purposes of the program, I'll use about 600 milligrams, and that's that's been what's uh, that's the dose. Um, 600 to 700 milligrams has been studied in hypothyroidism. Okay, and I, I know for PCOS, a lot of products have a combination of myo inositol and D-chiro inositol. Absolutely, and I have I have a little bit of a note in my book that talks about utilizing that for PCOS too. Oh, okay. Um, let's see, you also mentioned L-carnitine. Yes, yes. So L-carnitine is a mitochondrial supporting um, supplement. It is incredibly helpful for people who have brain fog. It's been studied in thyroid fatigue, about 2000 milligrams per day or so is what we're dosing it at. And a lot of the people in my program, I've had about 3,500 people go through it. We have about a 92% relief um, improvement in brain fog. Um, in just those That's few fantastic. And a lot of people do credit the um, carnitine for that because what it does, it, it does a lot of things, but it helps to move fatty acids into our mitochondria. So the mitochondria can produce energy. It helps us um, remove ammonia from the body. A lot of times we can have ammonia buildup from gut infections, from constipation, from gut dysbiosis, certain gene variations. And ammonia can be incredibly neurotoxic and cause brain fog. Carnitine can help with clearing that out of our bodies. You know, I I, I, I would listen to your interview with Hyman and I, that's the first time I heard about ammonia uh, as being an issue. That's interesting. You know, in Los Angeles, we not only have um, uh, we, we not only have uh, chlorine in our water, we have ammonia, it's chloramine. So we're actually, if we're drinking tap water and not um, not purifying it like I do, um, we're actually drinking ammonia. So I wonder if that could be a big issue as well. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. I'll have to look into that. Um, I know it can be generally, definitely produced internally, but potentially external sources. I always do recommend filtering water because you never know what's going to be in your water supply well they, yeah you're right all the stuff we don't know about but that's when they actually tell us they put in and uh i you talked about mitochondrial support and i noticed that the acronym of your book is atp which i'm sure is not by accident oh yes absolutely so um atp is our body's energy source body's energy exchange how our mitochondria makes energy right and so um so this book is all about transforming your energy all about transforming your life creating vitality in your life and it is it's it's a new take on adrenals so i really focus on a lot of the nutritional aspects some of the foundations that i've taken from old adrenal protocols but i also have a big piece of mitochondrial support that i utilize and then transformational personal growth techniques that really help us rewire that stress response. So, you know, we can take all the supplements we want and we can we can like eat a super healthy diet. But if, if our mind is still stuck in survival mode because of past trauma or you know, some of our wiring, then we're, we're or just, or if you spend all day on Twitter or social yeah. media <laughs> oh, yeah. or, or watching the news, right. You're, right. you're going to be constantly getting this, 
source of stress and danger. Yeah. And that can be just from your own mind or from your own habits. So I really wanted to have a comprehensive plan for people to, to like truly transform their stress response. So I have had adrenal dysfunction three times myself, and I don't want to have it again. Um, and a big part, big part of that has been really transforming my brain function and supporting my supporting my body and my mind. That's great. Um, how can listeners find out more about you, your book and your programs? My books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, wherever fine books are sold. Um, and then my website is thyroidpharmacist.com. I have an ABC's guide for adrenals guide. Uh, if people go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash ABC that I'd be happy to share with everybody. That's great. Thank you so much, Isabella. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Ben. Thank you for making it all the way through this episode of the Rational Wellness Podcast. For those of you who enjoy listening to the Rational Wellness Podcast, I would certainly appreciate it if you could go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and give us a five-star ratings and review. That way, more people will discover the Rational Wellness Podcast. And I wanted to let everybody know that I do have some openings for new patients so I can see you for a functional medicine consultation for specific health issues like gut problems, autoimmune diseases, cardiometabolic conditions, or for an executive health screen or, and to help you promote longevity and take a deeper dive into some of those factors that can lead to chronic diseases along the way. Um, and that usually means we're going to do um, some more detailed lab work, stool testing, sometimes urine testing. Um, and we're going to look at uh, a lot more details to get a, a better picture of your overall health from a preventative functional medicine perspective. So if you're interested, please call my Santa Monica White Sports Chiropractic and Nutrition Office at 310-395-3111 and we can set you up for a new consultation for functional medicine. I'll talk to everybody next week.